I went ahead and bought some red shells actually because they're really cool and I'll explain when we actually get into a battle where their practical use can be shown off because otherwise they're basically green shells. But anyway, first things first, new enemy here, Shrewboid. Or Shrewed, whatever you want to call it. So metallic shrews. <laughs> what were you about to say? Mm, no, I'm just going, hmm, hmm. I don't know how I would feel about that if, like, let's just say there are a whole bunch of killer robots in the shape of humans. I wouldn't feel comfortable around them, and I can't help but feel either shrews are a different kind of race, which is very much a possibility, or if I were a shrew, I wouldn't feel comfortable around a shrewed, a robot shrew. Could be just me, though. Well, at what point are they considered androids? Good point. <laughs> it's all I'm Good saying. Point. It's all I'm saying. They actually have a lot of different attacks that they can do, so we've barely touched the surface on what they're possibly able to do. There we go. One thing that I do like about Toad Town as a hold here, Toad Town in the past, is that a lot of the scenery in this Toad Town actually looks really, really similar to the ending scene in Yoshi's Island. So basically this entire area is just a big gigantic reference to uh, Yoshi's Island, is you basically get to see Toad Town well, except it's only been taken over by shrubs, of course, but what it was like then. So for that, once again, a round of applause for this game. Dire Pow. We've already gotten Dire Pow in the past before. Eh, I gotta go around the lawn way, because that part of the door is just shut tight. I, I like how the door is all barred up, but no one's alive inside. That doesn't bode very well. Nah, they crawled through the windows and got their ass eaten. <laughs> <laughs> so that they, they left their chimney open and they went down the chimney. To be fair, I think the shrubs did that in Holly Jolly Village. They went down the chimney. So, if your town's going to experience shrub invasion, you, you got to protect that chimney and the windows too. Because very clearly, these people in these houses didn't, and now their houses are filled with shrub shrubs, and presumably they're dead, turned into vim. <laughs> There we go, there's a secret little, I don't know, doghouse area to the right over here. A lot of the houses in Toad Town actually have this area to the right here for whatever reason. Which actually made me big the question, what pets do toads have again? We don't really see toads with pets all that often, do we? No, I don't know what they keep as pets. Uh, Goombas? Uh, no. I don't know. What the hell would they keep as a pet? A lizard of some sort, or...? Given how diverse the Mushroom Kingdom is as a whole, the concept of owning a pet would imply that there's a species in the Mushroom Kingdom that isn't particularly intelligent enough to like be like a social member of society, but at the same time is adorable enough that people want to keep them like we keep cats and dogs. So you're saying um, Yoshis? Yeah, Yoshis would be a decent guess there, depending on how intelligent you think a Yoshi is, <laughs> but there's a decent guess. Or a dinosaur with boots. <laughs> Some people would disagree with me on that. Actually, Yoshis are pretty intelligent, but whatever. They, they are. I'm not certain if they qualify under this example, though I just thought that when you're playing A Link to the Past, you have that one house that has a Chain Chomp. And I can't help but think a Toad might be able to do a same, the same thing with a Chain Chomp. A Chain Chomp would be a good pet. Didn't they? Yes, it would be. Didn't they already have like a Chain Chomp pet like in like Thousand Year Door or the original Mario? Wasn't there a pet Chain Chomp that followed somebody around? I, I want to say during one of the Paper Marios that may have happened, though more specifically, before Paper Mario Sticker Star came out, and they they were just re releasing the game first off, and it was like Paper Mario working title, or I don't know if they had Sticker Star as the name. One of the very early screenshots showed a Mario in a Paper Mario style battle with a Chain Jump partner, and everyone was really hyped for that, and I was too. And then the partners were taken away from us in Sticker Star. No. no. Mm-hmm. So our Cobalt Star is just going crazy, and the explanation the game gives us is because we were approaching another Cobalt Star. And evidently, uh, we now know it's at Star Hill. 
Thank you. Um, so, Toad Town, its gimmick as a dungeon is that it actually forces you to separate the babies and the adults. And I skipped a whole bunch of enemies back here, so I figured I might as well go back and kill them all. <laughs> well, I find it interesting how I sped through that area really, really quickly there. If theoretically I wanted to go through this game at collecting minimal experience, that is something that could be done. I actually have to wonder if anyone's ever done a minimal experience run. Because, I mean, this is Mario and Luigi. You can just dodge every attack. Why not dodge every enemy, too? That'd make for a really difficult run, though. It would be difficult, but it would be just like me. Nah, I don't feel like fighting you. Run, 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 run. That's what I do most of the time anyway, unless I absolutely have to fight. It's just like, yeah, I'm not fighting this thing. <laughs> anyway, we're checking the babies fast for Earth. Um, so, that enemy right there is called a love bubble. They're little bastards, as I like to call them. Because they look like a flying Kirby, and they fly at you and like try to pound you for their attacks, and they can also heal all the enemies, too. Ah. This other guy is called a Skelloki. You know, like a pokey, a Skelloki. I'm still gonna murder <laughs> the bastard that came up with all these names. <laughs> It's worth noting that the regular Pokies and Partners in Time actually don't have spikes on their heads. They have the flowers so you can jump on them, and these guys don't, so you actually can't jump on these guys. But otherwise, for all intents and purposes, uh, Skelloki is basically a Pokey with the same moves, just does more damage. And is a skeleton. And is a skeleton, and you can't jump on him. And he has freaky little spots of eyes, or lights in his eye holes. Well, it kind of makes sense, like the normal Koopa Skeletons, they have lights for eye holes. Yes, indeed they do. There we go. So that kind of took a little bit of a whooping that battle, so let's go ahead and heal up there. There we go. So other than those two shop owners, just as an FYI, there's no one else here. No toads. There's actually no shroobs here either. There's just the shroob robots. This entire area has been entirely taken over. And I guess just the scrappy, in this case, skello keys and shroob robots were left behind to defend it. <laughs> oh, and these love bubble things too that are bastards. But we'll see more of them later on so I can go about how much they are bastards some more. Well, they just pillaged everything, took what they needed, and left it in decay and ruin. Sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Took what they need, and yeah, they. I guess in that regard, it's not like they completely left it ruined. They left some people behind to defend it. Maybe the point wasn't necessarily to even defend it, just to warn of an oncoming offensive more than anything else. The, hey, you have to get through this really weak army, but if you attack this really weak army, we know you're coming. Ah. Shrooms have decent strategy, if that's how you want to put it, actually. But I can't help but think, oh hey. Toad Town got entirely taken over and decimated in the past here. That had to have had some kind of effect on the town's history. You know, back 20 years ago, the town got totally destroyed and rebuilt. <laughs> Though it could also explain why Toad Town just always looks different in every single game. Because in a sense, actually, in the beginning of Mario Galaxy, Toad Town looks different than it does in Paper Mario. But Bowser also does kind of an ans or an assault on Toad Town in that game, so it may maybe Toad Town's just used to having to rebuild every like year or so. Oh no, the town got destroyed. Looks like Mario has to go on another adventure, and we have to rebuild the town again. I wonder if there's any like funding that they set aside for if when Toad Town gets destroyed. <laughs> Well, we know the princess's, uh, her economic policy is just to point coins into blocks, so maybe it's, oh, hey, everything got destroyed, but look, there's a whole bunch of coins in the blocks, so we have money to rebuild now. <laughs> maybe that was her rationale for pointing a whole bunch of coins in blocks, is that if everything gets destroyed, there's money to rebuild now. What do you think? I don't know about that one, especially if you're like, well, we're low on cash, well, let's go beat on our house for some spare money. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I, uh, man, th there's like a really, really good game theory that's on the tip of my tongue, but I just don't know exactly how to complete it or exactly in truth what the full theory is, but it has to do with economic policy, Totown getting continually destroyed like every single game and all that, and it explains everything. It's like, ah, there's a theory there, and I know there is. 
Oh well. But yeah, overall, this place, very, very, very dead. Not the kind of place that I would just like to have two babies just roaming around killing everything in, but okay. We've actually made it to our next checkpoint, so it's time to go back to the adults. Oh, I suppose there's this passageway down here that I missed. Why don't I go ahead and check it out? I missed two smash eggs. Woo! There we go. But there's a couple of houses that we currently can't enter because we kind of need the babies to enter them. And now we've entered into a battle with some more love bubbles. Oh, I missed. Also, that's the first time that attack happened and I forgot about it. So that attack... You just have to watch the foot, and that determines which brother it goes after, actually. And it's not supposed to be that difficult. This attack is Simon Says. <laughs> that attack's really entertaining, just because it's like, do what he says. And also interesting to note, it is actually possible to dodge the, uh, the flags being thrown at you. So, here's why love bubbles are a giant pain in the ass, is that if you attack them, sometimes they puff up and then heal all their allies just like that. It's like, no! No! Alright, can I dodge one of these, please? Well, uh, evidently not! Ugh. I'd probably have a better use of a big ice encapsulating shield if I could use it as a part of an attack. Like, you could start the attack and then do the flag attack with Simon Says. <laughs> that would, like, guarantee loss, and then the flag's thrown at the Mario Brothers. It's like, come on, mix up your attacks, enemies. But I do have a theory about the love bubbles, because when you look at the other enemies here, you have the robot shrubs, you have the skeletal keys, and then the love bubbles just kind of stand out. It's like, why are love bubbles here? Well, here's my theory. It's that those love bubbles are actually parasites that fester off of destruction. So they complement all this destruction that the shrubs did very well. <laughs> And they're pink, so, you know, they have to throw some pink in with the purple. <laughs> they also match the color scheme of this entire area, so they're good from a game design perspective. Sure, why not? They're they're useless otherwise. <laughs> Are you sure? H have you ever s watched the episode of Star Trek that was all about tribbles? Yes, yes I have. Okay. Or for people who don't remember old Star Trek, Parasprites from My Little Pony is basically the same thing. Love levels are like that, except they really hurt, and they're painful. Anyway, that was a red shell. They're awesome, because they go infinitely for until you either kill all the enemies or miss. So unlike a green shell, where it'll just end when you kill an enemy, a red shell, you can keep going and going and going. The thing is, once it kills an enemy, it doesn't stop, and its trajectory changes. So you have to anticipate that or be ready for it. Because in my case, that very first time I was showing the red shells, it's like I wasn't quite ready for it. And of course, red shells can't attack enemies in the air, much like green shells. They'd be useless against these love bubbles. But if you're against a whole bunch of enemies and are very confident in your shell ability, they are really useful, actually. Just give me a blue shell. It kills everything. <laughs> I would really like a blue shell, actually. I, I have the util free badge on Luigi, but it's just, I'm just use bro items at no expense. So if I had a blue shell, it's like I would just need one, and then I could just constantly toss them. My fear would be if I had the blue shell, though, would it just always attack Mario and Luigi because they're in first? Food for thought. Or because, you know, the shrubs invaded the entire planet, would the blue shell consider the shrubs be first and attack the enemies? Depends how you quantify first here, or even if the blue shell would function like that outside of a race, actually. What's a game outside of Mario Kart that used a blue shell as a weapon? You could technically say the new Smash Brothers, but the problem with the new Smash Brothers is that it attacks the, the opponent in the lead in the fight. <laughs> yeah, it's indiscriminatory. So, I don't know, I'm trying to think, what did they use a blue shell? Uh, there wasn't one in Super Mario World. Um, yeah. There wasn't one in, well, there was the Mario Galaxy, it's about not even that. No. Not even Mario Galaxy. You do get the shell suit, and the first new Super Mario Brothers is kind of the quote unquote game's new power up, which basically just lets you roll around in a shell, like through a level. 
and you were technically a blue-shelled Koopa in that situation. So, I, I, I guess the best implementation here, barring from that New Super Brothers implementation, is, oh hey, we got the blue shell, let's go into a blue shell suit, and then roll into all the enemies over and over again. The thing is, you wouldn't have Mario and Luigi kicking him back and forth. I guess you would just have to have Luigi on one end if Mario starts it, and then Mario rolls across the entire screen, and then comes back, loops around the screen, and then you just have to keep jumping on Mario. I'm overthinking this. I'm thinking about a new bro attack, actually. Wow. <laughs> okay, then. Yeah. So, that's how a blue shell would work, except it would just keep going and going and going and going and going and going. Wrap around the screen and wrap around the screen and wrap around the screen and wrap around the screen. Ah, for fudge's sake, wow. And in case you're wondering the tell for whether he does that or not, it depends on where he actually starts relative to Mario and Luigi. If he's low to the ground, he'll just stay low to the ground, but if he starts up high at the ground, he'll first swoop down, then come back up. There we go. So in this block is actually a very useful piece of equipment called the Parislax. The Parislax, huge buff to speed, and it's not too shabby on the defense either. Not great on the defense, but... Eh, it could be better. But the thing is, like, if we equip this on either Mario and Luigi, they're guaranteed to attack first in almost any situation. I'd think you'd have to purposely underlevel Mario and Luigi to not get them to attack first with the Parislax on, actually. So here, here's the deal. Now that I have that Parislax, while it's not going to be showcased this part, it'll be showcased the next part. You can find Parislax with Util Free. You can start every single battle without getting attacked with Luigi, or you could do it with Mario as well, I guess. Start a battle with a free bro item usage, and then you could just smoke opponents, because you can start a battle with a bro item and completely destroy them. So we've broken the game, essentially, with the pair of slacks and the util free badge. That sounds like my kind of strategy. Do it! <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be seeing it next part, actually, so... Sweet! Do it! But... First, I, I, I gotta go collect a whole bunch of these houses that I missed because I didn't have the babies with me. Interestingly enough, I attacked more enemies with the adults than I did with the babies, actually. So right now my adults are, are higher level than the babies. If I would've put a bit more effort to doing some more of the battles with the brothers combined and skimping enemies, I could've kept their levels equal or kept the babies ahead, but it's like, I really don't care now. <laughs> <laughs> really, my offensive powerhouses are the adults. The babies are there for uh, support. Meat shields. I guess. They're the meat shields. <laughs> they assist with attacks, and I guess they can pick up a down bro occasionally, but it's like I really care about adult Mario and Luigi's level a lot more than I do about the babies, actually. Meat shields! Get your meat shields! <laughs> I wish. There we go, that's how we do it. Holy cow. That's how we do it. So yeah, a lot of some houses I did miss a couple of items. Let's go ahead and just skip ahead to everything that I missed so far. In this house we have a bean! Do 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 Yay. There we go. And the Dynamic Badge A. Um, it lets you use bro items, increased attack power, but they cost four bro items. So if I were to equip, for example, Dynamic Badge A on Mario right now, every single bro item would take four times the cost, but they'd be massively more powerful. So it's useful in a boss battle that you just want to destroy really quickly, but you better be prepared to spend a lot of bro um, items on it. But that actually does it with our rump through Toad Town right now, actually. Good, this place is looking pretty dismal. It is, it really is. And that pipe to our right here, that leads us directly to our next area. So on the next episode of Let's Play Mario and Luigi, Partners in Time, we're going on to the next dungeon after Toad Town. Yeah, this place is dead. Anyway, I am Miles Luigi. And I'm the Evil Pop Dark. See you next time. <laughs>